episode of The Dealer Playbook, a podcast that explores what it takes to create a thriving career right here in the retail auto industry. I'm your host, Michael Cirillo, and boy, oh boy, that is exactly what we're talking about today, how to take your career from sales to CEO with my pal, Louis Heron. Well, I'm excited about this conversation because, you know, you are one of those, can I say titans? <laughs> those you can juggernauts? Say that that know exactly what it takes to actually go from where the rubber meets the road to the driver's seat. And I love any time I get to speak to somebody on the podcast that that can just speak to the principles, the mindset, right. the, 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 the concepts, the, the, the attitude that it actually requires to go from sales to, in fact, CEO. I mean, you're a 25 year industry veteran. You've been in sales, you've been a manager, You've been a general manager, you've been a principal, you've been an owner, you've been a partner, you've owned three different rooftops, you've sold, you consult others how to do the same thing. So I guess my first question to you for maybe that sales pro frontline living in Doglick, Nebraska, who's like, dude, I don't know if this, can I, I, is there a career path here? Tell us a little bit about your journey in the business up to where you are now. Basically, how'd you get in? How did you get to where you are now? Sure. So first of all, Michael, I want to tell you, look, thank you so much. It's an honor to actually to be on your podcast. So I, I can't go without saying that. I Truly, you've had some phenomenal uh, guests, business people, uh, communicators. And so hopefully I can do your, your show justice by sharing uh, some, of the, some of the information we have to talk about today. To your question, um, I guess if we talk about myself you know, I'm, I'm from a family uh, of non-car people. In fact, if you would have asked me years ago um, what, what I want to do for a living, I would have told you I want to play football in the NFL. That's all, all I did was eat, sleep, drink football. I think, you know, coming out of South Florida, you know, football was big. Uh, high school football was big. Still is in that neck of the woods. Um, I was just hungry uh, to really get out of the house. I mean, quite frankly, the motivating factors, unfortunately, were, were of my parents, uh, you know, being adopted, that whole situation. By the time I was 18, I was ready to leave. Unfortunately, my mother was, was uh, you know, hooked on drugs and drank a lot and father was abusive. And it was one of those scenarios. We weren't broke. We didn't live in the ghetto. We didn't, I don't have that story, but there was a lot of trauma that affected me. In fact, still affects me to this day. Um, and a lot in a positive way and other things that I'm still working on on a daily basis, but leaving that situation and getting out, I was not supposed to be a car person. Um, right. So, you know, my, my whole venture, I went and played football, went to college and, and long story short, if I fast forward that it wasn't good enough to make it to the NFL, uh, an elite group of people. Uh, and one summer I was, uh, I was loading trucks at Villa, uh, at Lowe's distribution plant in Villa Rica, Georgia. And, uh, I started, I picked up a part-time, uh, job waiting tables at Chili's. And at the time I was not somebody that would speak in front of people very comfortable. I was a talkative kid, but if something happened to me, I wasn't, I wasn't that, uh, comfortable. Uh, very insecure and intimidating, so to speak. And, and uh, in fact, even failed speech class in college. So I, I definitely did not have that natural gift. So when I had took this job on, I was so nervous. Um, my, my buddy asked me to go do this job. And I'm like, look, you know, I don't know about speaking in front of people, but I'll take it on. Like literally one of the first things I did was memorize the whole Chili's menu. Right. Cause I didn't want to be stumped. Like, right. but, but, but even that example is, is part of what I really feel like uh, is a path to help people accelerate in business in general, and even in the, in the car business. The fact that I would memorize the menu, the fact that I would actually internalize that to be able to respond and rebuttal quickly without, without having a problem was indicative that something was inside of me that I did not realize at that time. But anyways, long story short, I ended up waiting on a guy that was from Miami, Florida, uh, and he happened to be a finance director at a Honda dealership. And so every time he would come in, he'd ask for the 20 year old kid that, you know, from Miami, I would serve him to eventually he asked me to get in the car business. I brought, I broomed him. I brushed him off time and time again. Um, although, uh, you know, I didn't know what direction I was going. I just knew that, uh, you know, um, you know, I wasn't, I was going on the path to be a coach and a teacher. I mean, that was right. my passion to, to work with kids and football. And that's all I could think about. I get in the car business. And, um, and once I got into the car business, I realized two things. Number one, the way we did, the way we sold cars, the industry was kind of just like, it, it wasn't my core. It was kind of rough. It was, you know, and then the, the second thing was I realized people were making a lot of money. And when I saw they were making money and I saw the effort they were giving, I was, I, it, the two didn't make sense. Cause I will tell you, I didn't come up from a family of car people. My dad that was a roofer. And so one thing I saw with my dad, if anything, is he was up at four o'clock and he worked all day and he, he was a hard worker. And so what was embedded in me was, was the amount of work ethic 
um, and how you handle a job and how much pride you take in doing the job. I didn't see that in the car business. Uh, and so right. that excited me. And so that kind of became my NFL. I mean, literally as a 20 year old guy, I really started thinking to myself, okay, I can make big money at the time. If I could just make 30 or $40,000 a year, I thought I was rich, right? You're talking about a 20 year old kid. But when I realized the finance manager was making a buck 20 and the sales manager was making 140 and Steve Shaddix who's selling cars is making 13, $12,000 a month. And he never gets out of his, his office. I started connecting dots realizing, okay, I got to get good at this because there's opportunity here. And um, it didn't take long. I started uh, really uh, ingesting every bit of information, no social media at the time, no YouTube at the time. At that time it was, it was cassette tapes. Right. And uh, so my car was like automobile university. I mean, anything and everything, preachers, teachers, communicators, psychologists, closing skills, phone skills, you name it. I went back to the Chili's mindset and I memorized, I practiced drill, rehearse, practice, drill, rehearse, uh, and that's still a philosophy that, that I coach today uh, to help people, you know, get to that next level because you, you can't, you can't rise, you can't rise to the levels that you want to go if you don't have the words. And I think in business, especially in any business we're negotiating or selling, you, you need opportunities and you need words. Those are the two things you got to have. You got to have opportunities. So you got to know how to create those opportunities. You got to know how to maximize the ones you have. And then you got to have words. Uh, those are the bullets in the gun. You have no words, you have no more bullets, you're done. So I think that's a huge part. So I get in the car business and, and sure enough, I started, I had these ambitious wild goals. Um, I remember telling people when I was 22 years old, when I first became a sales manager that I wanted to buy a car dealership. And I guess they would think that's kind of cute, right? Young guy, how are you going to do that? We know, you know, Michael, these dealerships are millions of dollars. And I've always kind of operated uh, on the philosophy when the, when the why is so big, the how will show up. Yep. I, I really, I just knew it was, it was something inside of my spirit. And I knew that I, people would ask me, how in the world are you going to do that? And my response was always, I don't care. I, I'm not worrying about the how. It, it'll, it'll find its way to me. And I really believe that. And I, re, and I firmly believe um, on Proverbs 3, 5 says, lean not on your own understanding, but acknowledge him in all your ways and he will direct your path. My faith was, was very, it was very important to me because that's all I had to lean on when I left the house at 18. It was a critical piece of, of really experiencing being alone and no parental supervision. And so I carried that with me, you know, and still do to this day, obviously far from perfect, you know, but, um, you know, I think those were some core characteristics that helped me um, have the vision, have the mindset and not get caught up in, in, in all the strategy. Yeah. And I think, you know, that, that propelled me uh, into moving forward. So I immediately was a sales manager at 22. I was a general manager of the same store that I sold cars at at 20 by the time I was 28 years old. So in eight years, I went from salesperson to general manager. And then from there, uh, uh, from 28 to 32, I got my first partnership agreement at Toyota dealership in uh, Augusta. And again, uh, just philosophically, I had to go all in. I borrowed $240,000 against my 401k that I'd saved in the six years. I took $100,000 against my house of equity and went all in and got a note for $3 million and, and uh, went at it. And, and again, it was a store that was selling 100 cars a month for 25 years. And I convinced uh, five managers and their wives to move their children to go from Atlanta to Augusta. And they didn't know what they were going to get paid, but they were following me. I just said, it's going to be big. Just, I'm, I'm, we're going out here. It's a partnership. I'm going to buy, I'm going to buy my own store and I'm going to buy 10 stores. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, do my best to create 10 partners. Right. And that was it. And these people believed in me. And sure enough, we went from hundred cars to 260, 280, 270, and, um, and, and I own 30% of the dealership at the time. And, and then she wanted to sell the dealership after, uh, it was probably four years, three and a half years that I was there. And, uh, we, we cashed out pretty good and it, it, it all worked out. And then I took that, that money and leveraged that money and went and bought my own Toyota dealership, had that for six years and then, um, sold that, uh, had no intention of selling it. I was very excited. You know, I was a 35 year old guy, been in the business for 15 years and I was a Toyota dealer, which is like creme de la creme, right? Uh, other than Lexus, like that's the one and 3,300 Toyota dealers in the country. I was the one, I, I was one of them. And, and at the time I was the youngest SCT Southeast Toyota dealer in the network in the Southeast. So I was, I was excited. Um, but somebody came along when it was time to build a new facility and, and I had to spend a bunch of money. Uh, they, they wanted, they wanted the store. And, uh, and so I sold the store, you know, and, and sold the store and, and made a good, good, uh, good lick off that deal. That was good. It was fruitful. I mean, I had it for six years, ran it for six years, made good money for six years and sold it for, you know, six X, um, of what I paid for it. So that was a good deal and went on to buy a Chrysler dealership. And, um, 
at the time still still working and evolving and and really just trying to figure out um you know as i was getting older what what i really wanted to do and there was always something inside of me uh it's funny because my wife she she found these goals that i wrote when i was 18 years old it sits on my desk and it's funny when you reflect when i reflect and i look at that one of the things that i had there was to be able to speak and influence and help people grow and get better on life-changing issues and 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 one of the things was to help people um along the way like i was helped as a young guy, like, like those two things stick out in me. And I think there's something to be said uh, for venturing into sales to CEO, you know, is, is kind of merging from the industry of having that passion of teaching and coaching other people on how to get to that next level. So, you know, I've been fortunate to live it. Right. Uh, and so, you know, obviously I, I didn't really get taught. I was taught by many people along the way, no one mentor, but uh, I, you know, I learned what I needed to learn. Then I lived it out. And then, and then now I have this, this passion to teach and help those that are ambitious, the few, the select that want to go from a salesperson to a manager, a salesperson to a general manager, or maybe even a GM that wants to buy his first store, whether it's equity investors, you know, whether it's, you, you know, there's so many different facets, right? If somebody wants to buy a dealership, a general manager has been doing this for, I don't know, 10 years. Even though he has the knowledge, he has, he knows operations. Most, most guys can't tell you, should I do an asset purchase or a stock purchase? What are the liabilities if I go either way? Should, should I do an offshore account? Should it be a CFC account? Should it not be? I mean, you know, the tax and depreciation on the real estate, setting up management companies, like little things that have nothing to do with, with actually operations of the car dealership, but it's a huge piece. Those are the kind of things that I want to eventually, you know, put those those programs together for those guys that want to do that and help them do the unthinkable. Because I can tell you, if I look back and people were to ask me, hey, at 20 years old, buying a car dealership, it, it would seem unthinkable. But it's but honestly, if you if you follow the, the, the right path, it's very, very possible. Well, I don't buy it at all. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's amazing. You know, there, there's a couple of things that I want to unpack here, especially Listen, for those of you that are paying attention, I want you to I want you to listen with your magical ears right now and and listen between the lines of some of the things that Louie's talking about here. And I want to go right back to Chili's for a minute because I think, you know, what you talk about there resonates deeply with me. It's a conversation that I was just having with my team. You know, every morning I have a revenue team meeting and we say, okay, what's your goal for the day? What's your, you know, how's that map into your goal for the week, et cetera, et cetera. We have a relatively new team member and he's like, bro, I am 10 X dialing for dollars. I'm doing, eh, I'm, I'm just going to go all in yesterday. Wasn't as good as I wanted it to be because I was getting a lot of no's and why are you calling me and this and that. And I said, look, I've told everybody that works with me the same thing. And that is if you were to pull up next to me in a vehicle at a stoplight, you would think I was schizophrenic. This dude's talking to himself. There's no phone in sight. Why is he talking? To and it's because I do. I talk to myself and I run wordplay in my mind and out of my mouth to schizophrenic proportions. My right. commute to and from home to the office, I am talking to myself. I am role playing. I am getting words formulated. I'm finding new ways to say something. I'm memorizing. I'm you know, and you also said something about crunching your time. Essentially, you turned your vehicle into a university. We we had a guest on the show, um, Adrian Shepard, uh, who uh, is all about time management. And that's one of the things that he encourages is like, hey, you're in the vehicle anyways. Turn it into a learning environment, like crunch right. it together, you know. Um, and I think that's so important. I think a lot of people don't understand the value of just putting in simple work like that repetition of memorization or saying things in a certain mm -hmm. way or hearing themselves say something so that when they are in front of a customer or in a business negotiation or at a bank, you know, a financial negotiation that the words are actually coming out of their mouth and what contribution that has in, in people's confidence in you. Oh man, mm -hmm. this, this person's on his, on his a game. Like he knows what he's talking about. Right. Um, versus somebody that fumbles over the words. And so I'm, I'm impressed by, you know, at such a young age, you're like, nah, I, I'm going to memorize the Chili's menu. Right. I hope those that are, are listening to this and wondering, can I go from sales to CEO? Is it possible? Pay attention to the small things. I believe that by small and simple things, great things happen. And, and your story, what I'm hearing, which is, which is tremendous, I think is a, is a testament of that. But further to that, I think, 
you know, you, you also kind of display, and maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think so as I've gotten to know you a little bit better. You have this no nonsense mindset, like, Hey, dig in. Do you think, do you think some of that came from the fact that your father worked in the trades? He was a roofer and there's generally that like, Oh, you're sick. Boo hoo. Get to it. Get the job done. Do you think some of that came from him or, or how did you develop that kind of resilience? No, I, 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 th- I think, yeah. I mean, I think those that are most people that are highly driven uh, probably come from some form of, of dysfunction of trying to prove or trying to uh, become something uh, to get some kind of adoration or some kind of respect or some kind of love or some kind of pat on the back. Yeah. I, I, I'm vulnerable enough to, to say that I think I had some negative experience with that growing up and I've always had something to prove, you know, right. uh, it, now that I'm a little older at 46, I realized that, that I don't have anything to prove, right. I, my motives, you know, motives have to be correctly aligned with who I, I, I am uh, authentically am as a person. And I think as you get older, you start to learn more and more who the heck you are because, you know, over the years for me, yes, I was driven and no nonsense. And I did take the same football philosophy on the field. And yes, I did witness my dad. I've never got any coaching from my dad, but I witnessed right. a lot of what he did. And I saw things every single day. And, and, and there are things that I do see that I have um, that probably came from him. Right. But, but in the end, yeah, I think, I think regardless, it, the philosophy of, of work, uh, is gotta be part of the recipe. Now I will say this, if if some people just say, Hey, just work harder. Well, listen, if work harder was the strategy, it's implying you're not working hard enough. Now you gotta do more than just work hard. Right. But, uh, no, I think it has a huge impact. No doubt. You, um, also said something that I love. You're one of the few people actually that have, have said this the way that I so deeply believe it, which is, focus on what, not how. Right. And a lot of people don't understand that because their, their first response is usually, but, but, but how do I do that? Right. Right. And so that just shows me that you have this action oriented mindset, which I believe everybody needs to have instead of like, we're not philosophers. We're not sitting here, but how, how am I going to go from the next level? No, dude, what, what are you going to do? Right. What are you going to do? And so I love that you brought that up because especially, you know, the DPB gang knows years ago, early 20s, mental health issues, all that kind of stuff. I one of my fixed beliefs was getting stuck in the how, not the Mm -hmm. what. Yeah. Sitting here, how are you going to do it? I was going to when you say that, it makes me think. Um, I, I do think, and there's gotta be a healthy balance. Um, uh, and I, and I, I'm, I'm, I don't know that I can say that I had the most healthy balance being as truthful as I can, but I, but I do know one thing that when I was all in, as I was coming through the car business from salesperson, all the way up to CEO, all the way up to owning a dealership, I was all in and that all in philosophy kept me in line with, you know, drinking and drugs and like, like it kept me the, the the obsession to win was so big, whether the motive was incorrect or not. I can't, I, you know, I can look back now and probably say, yeah, I had some drive probably because I'm trying to show my dad I was somebody probably. However, as I got older, I think I got past some of that. But the point of the matter is to be so streamlined focused, to want something. I never worried about the how, Michael. I really didn't. I, I like, I, cause I thought if I got caught up on how in the world am I going to have four five, six million dollars to buy a car dealership? I, I mean, I, I don't even know how, I, why even consume, concern myself with that. What I know I can do is I can infect change. I can lead people. I can, I can grow people and we can move the needle. If we can move the needle and get bigger results, things are going to happen. I'll meet somebody who knows somebody who has money that, that likes me. And that's exactly what played out. Like literally people that would come into my life. I don't know how I met them, but here they are. And next thing you know, opportunity. And you know, these stories, they have, that's what happens to winners. I mean, people that just keep pressing and they know what they want and they can, they can eliminate, I don't want to say eliminate because, because down fear and worry are always there, but, but they suppress it and don't get consumed with it. That's what helps them go to the next level and push forward, you know, and that's, and that's challenging, but, but you got to condition yourself to be uncomfortable to, to learn how to do that. Yeah. You also bring up something in, in a bit of a transition here, because I want to speak to, to this 18 year old Louis, who's writing a goal about being a speaker and an influencer and helping people grow and motivating, educating. I want to kind of transition into that topic a little bit by, by, I guess, positioning it this way. 
you brought up earlier that there there are more than enough general managers in the business who know the operations of the store. But you also brought up that when they want to make that transition, oh, the, oh yeah, I know how dealerships work. We see this all over the industry worldwide. It's a glo- That's the other global, that's the industry wide global pandemic. Oh yeah. Right. I, know, I know what I'm doing. I work my way up from salesperson. Now I'm a general manager and I'm ready to buy a store. And you brought up all of these things, subtle nuances, setting up companies and you know, what are the tax implications and how do I do it? And how do I borrow? How do I leverage? How do I, you know, all these sorts of things that people are going to be asking. Right. And it brings up one of the fundamental challenges I see in the industry, which is that people think they know more than they do. And you've just introduced a new element. No, actually, you know what you know right now, but there is another room that you're about to walk into, which is going to require a different level of discipline or knowledge or education. Seeing as how that ties into sales to CEO uh, university, which is one of the things that you're, you're the founder of that you've established to help educate people how to move their way up in the business. Um, how do you suggest, or what could you say somebody in that position should be thinking if they're, if they're really feeling in their heart that they need to go to that next step. Yeah, I, I'm going to go to that next step, but where should my brain and my heart be at? You've talked about yep. going all in. What's one thing that you would say to them? Like, hey, man, I know there's more for me than just being a salesperson. Or, hey, Louie, there, there's more for me than just being a sales manager or general manager. What, what do I got to do to start getting my ducks in a row? Mm, that's a loaded question because <laughs> that, that, that's, that, that, that's a lot of content over a lot of, a lot of videos and course material, but I, I'll try to condense maybe a couple of things that may make sense. If someone's a general manager and they're like, Hey, I want to take this step. Okay. One of the first things I, I, I would say um, is if you like a deal, in other words, number one, we got to find a deal. Okay. And there's a couple different ways, right? You, you can, you can look on most manufacturers have what's called DPR dealer performance review. And most of the DMS district managers that are within those organizations can, can, can give you a list of stores that are struggling. They may be out of trust. They're, they're, they're close to bankruptcy. Their volume numbers have not, they've not hit market share. All these indices that a, an operator, a general manager would know you get a list and you just call those guys up and say, Hey, I don't know if you're interested in selling your store, but I'd like to buy your store. That that's one way. Obviously, you can reach out to just brokers and, and build those relationships with which I have several brokers that I would lead my guys to and find a deal. But that's not really the most important part. To me, one of the first things is if, if a general manager finds a deal, I think what happens if I look back at myself, I get so caught up on, well, let me see the financial statement. Let me see this. Look, right. man, if you like the deal, put a letter of intent on the deal, buy the deal. You've got time for due diligence. You can always go backwards, but you got, if, if, if it's a great brand, and it's moving and shaking, you're going to miss the deal. I, I, I'm telling you, I missed two or three stores because I just drug my feet a little bit because I was like, oh, I'm not sure. I need more information. I need, look, put a letter of intent on the deal, ink the deal up. You can always go back and, and, and trim the deal back and find out what you need to find out to make the deal work financially for you and get the approval you need. But that, that was that's one thing I would tell you. If someone's ready to make that leap, let's get the contacts you need. Let's get you in front of the people you need. Let's find you a store. If you need equity investors, let's get you some money, right? And you got to know people. Like I, I can help guys to get the money. Right. Let's get the money. Let's get the people and let, let's rock and roll. Let's make it happen. But you can't overanalyze. You can't overanalyze, get a deal, lock it down. Almost like if you love, love a house then buy, buy the house. If, you, if that's your house, get it. And then let's do what we need to do to get, a, get approval from the, you know, from uh, the bank. You know what I love about this? Because you're right. I did ask the loaded question. <laughs> Yeah. But I just wanted the DPB gang to get a sense of how quickly you would have the answer because it's a testament to me of, of the, the knowledge that's in your mind. And I firmly right. believe that wise people learn from experience, super wise people learn from others' experiences. And this day and age, 20, you know, we're moving into 2021. So for those of you listening into the future, welcome back. Um, there's more than enough gurus. I'm going to go, I'm going to go lease the Lambo and I'm going to take my Instagram photos on the Lambo and the, it, dude, you're fake. There's no right. substance there. You're, you're fluff, you're gas, you're, you're nothing. You answered that loaded question so quickly. And it's just a testament to me of what 
somebody might learn. Now, you saw me looking down. For those that are watching the video, you saw me looking down, and it's not because I was disinterested. It's actually because I was pulling up your website, Louie, um, because it made me think of what can happen when somebody truly has the passion for helping others and, and wanting to see them grow, like the, the, the ye shall know them by their fruits, to borrow right. some Bible passages, versus those that are just in it to get rich. The, the, the approach is so different. Well, I was looking up on your website, uh, Sales CEO University. You have a, a video here, and shoot, I might say his name wrong, T Taurus. Taurus. Taurus Ross. Right. T tell me a little bit about him because you were, you were his manager. You had come into the store, and if I remember correctly, he thought he might get canned right out of the gates. He thought he might be disposable and... Yeah. He's coming in and we're going to turn things around, but no, he, it was actually quite different. So tell me a little bit about that journey and how you might recommend for leaders who are listening right now, how they can actually take perhaps mm -hmm. an unsuspecting quote unquote employee and lift them and rise them up to a new level. Yeah. The, you, you, you asked the perfect one because I light up because, because what I'm going to share, I, I think, uh, it, We'll, we'll make a ton of sense. You, you and I definitely connect on this and hopefully your listeners will as well. So Taurus, he was a guy when I first went into the dealership and he thought for sure he was part of the last regime. I went into the store and brought my people in with me and, and he just thought he was not going to make it. And I told him to hang tight and, and, and watched him for about two or three days. Well, here's what I, again, when, when you're talking about people and you're talking about building your business and, and I'm looking for certain pieces, I saw his energy. I saw his enthusiasm and, and, I, and I saw his willingness to hang on every word I had. So immediately I thought, okay, I can't teach energy. I can't teach enthusiasm and I, can, and I can't teach somebody that's, high, that's highly intense. Those are, those are gifts that they've been given that they've crafted and gotten better at. And, and I need that. Like in business, I, I want that. Uh, that, that. That's who I am. I need as many people like that around me. And, and he is a sponge, which means I can take this guy and let me try this guy on for size and see if he will, if he will follow my process. So much like sales, the CEO, uh, the program sales, the sales manager, like I, I outline everything one would need to do from going from a salesperson to a manager. And so wh what I've done with him is I laid out exactly, here's what we're going to do with appointments. Here's what we're going to do, you know, as far as closing the deals, the follow-up calls, uh, the email templates, here's what I want you to do. The one-on-ones, I, I loaded him up to see how much of this he could stand and Michael, he was Johnny on the spot. I'm talking about all in intense. And so I knew right away, uh, this was a guy I can use. Uh, he was talented. I knew the things that he didn't know he can be taught, but what I couldn't teach, he had. And right. so I think obviously with people development uh, in general, I need to find the people. I need to, I need the assets I can't teach. I need the guy that loves people, the guy that can, the guy that wants to work hard, the guy that'll show up early, the guy that'll stay late, the guy that's loyal, that will commit. If he can't close, I can teach him how to close. If he can't use this, read a script on the phone, we can teach him how to do that. I can't teach somebody to show up every day and want to play full out. Yeah. And he did that. And so anyways, with Taurus, we just, we just took him on and Taurus, I mean, I groomed him all the way to be a general manager. I mean, and he ran the number one Mitsubishi store in the country out of Dallas, Texas. And he was, I'm not going to say he was a nobody, but I'm telling you, he knew nothing. Like he knew nothing when we first started and he worked himself all the way up with me from a floor close sales person to a floor closer, to a sales manager, to the general sales manager and on to, to general manager. So, um, you know, he's, you know, again, it's, that's, that's, that's what you look for, but that's the potential. Like if, if I talk about people going from sales to CEO in any industry, if Taurus can do it, if Louie can do it again, I think people get caught up with, it's not about me. It's about the process that I used. I learned along the way. It's not about the person. Any person's capable. It's about the formula, the roadmap, the blueprint, who's got that. That's if you can follow that with a high level of intensity and a strong work ethic and a commitment to yourself and your family, you can get to any level you desire. He did that and he did a great job. I, you know, it's just a testament to life for a minute. Like let's switch out of the car business. Cause you, you'd kind of brought that up. It's just a testament to life. Like, to suggest that you've been li living and breathing, let's say for over 30 years, to, to all of a sudden suggest that you can't learn how to sell a car or to memorize right. a script or like, because right. sometimes we do that. We're like, L look at these vendors who have never sold a car in their life. Dude, you're dogging on somebody for something that is 100% teachable and 100% learnable. Right. Did I just make up? Am I? I'm George Bush now. No. I'm, I'm. I'm. 
got to teachify the man, you know. Um, you're so silly. <laughs> but, I, I don't know. but, you know, I love what you're saying. Like, hey, there's two elements here. There's the element of these things I can teach. These things can be learned. Here's the things that I can't necessarily teach somebody desire. I can't teach you desire. I can't teach you your own internal willingness. Right. And so I love that from a leadership perspective, you were picking up on those things that I don't think, or sorry, that, that, that I believe are often overlooked in the industry. Oh, well, he was a sale. He was, he was the lot attendant. And then he was the salesperson. We gave him a shot there and he did good. So now he should be okay to be a sales manager. And then you have this, half foot, one foot in, one foot out sales manager who's just happy about the paycheck, but not really about anything else, who's disengaged. I love that you're you're looking for things first that actually truly, in my opinion, set tone for the culture. Right. So for you as a leader, what does, because I know this is sometimes for those that maybe haven't experienced a healthy work culture, Mm -hmm. They think it's too high in the clouds, right? We're sitting up there with the Philadelphia cream cheese lady on a, on a cloud, cloud nine, right? What does culture translate to for you as a leader and operating a business? You know, for me, it's, well, I say car business, but I got to be genuine. If I was doing any business, I think I'd be the same because it's really what I expect. It's what I demand out of myself and it's what I want around me. Culture is environment, right? So think about it. If someone goes to a seminar they have a propensity to learn more because the environment is completely different than in their conference room, getting the same information, right? There's music, there's lights, there's this, there's no phones ringing. They're locked in a room for four hours in there. So the environment is set. So for me, culturally, my environment of when somebody walks into the dealership, like literally I need, I need people to feel like, man, what is going, like something's going on here. Like they can hear the music, they can smell the popcorn, they know what's going on. and, And there's a little buzz in the air. If that's not going on or people don't feel that, I, I know right away my leadership's not right or whatever store I'm in's not right. I, I can tell right away. The second thing is the culture of sense of urgency. In other words, my managers should be like little bees. I mean, if there are people in the showroom, they should be circulating, right? Kind of like football, heads on a swivel. You're looking around for anybody you can to talk to, engage with. Um, so I think, you know, uh, I think intensity, I, I think obviously positivity has got to be a must. I mean, there are negative situations we all encounter, but we can't labor over them long and we got to, we got to keep things moving. And I think fostering a culture of growth and learning. Uh, again, I, I would, I would love for my people to be excellent communicators and trainers. I would love to, for them to be great persuaders because that's what we do every day. We're persuading customers. We're persuading our staff. We're persuading each other. Right. They got to persuade me. Right. They, they want things they want out of me. So I think that that's that's a huge piece to your point. You mentioned earlier, too, about managers. Uh, I can tell you in, in the course manager to general manager, one, one of the golden nuggets, which is so, so simple that if sales managers in the car business are listening to this right now, that's super easy is there's a a distinct difference between a desk manager and a sales manager. A desk manager desks the car dealers, submits the deals to the bank and works with structuring car deals. That's, that's a prerequisite to be a sales manager. A sales manager is a guy that he he makes the follow up phone calls. He's touching base with, with all unsold traffic over the last 72 hours. He's a guy that's verifying the appointments, calling the no show appointments from the day before. He's a guy that's getting off his behind going out meeting and greeting customers throughout the day. And most importantly, when a deal needs to get shut down, he's the first guy with his hand up going, Hey, give me the deal. Let me go in there with confidence, teaching, his salesperson, what he's about to do through the process. That is a sales manager. If a guy wants to be a GM and he's currently a sales manager right now, the fastest way is to look at your partner and look at your other guy from the left and the right and say, okay, whatever these guys ain't doing, I got it all. I'll order the cars. I'll get off the desk. I'll make the phone calls. I'll desk the deal, submit them to the bank. I got it all. My mouth will be quiet. I'll work the schedule and then some, and I'll do it every day without fail, no exceptions and watch the general manager will be like, that's my guy. This is a guy in the organization that, because again, we're going back to culture. Right. We're going back to the guy that embodies like the heart, the heart and soul of a dealership. And that's a heartbeat from handshake to taillights that that environment has to be set. And it's typically set by those sales managers. I could. um, Dude, I want to buy a dealership now. This is where this conversation has got me. (laughs) Um, you know, and I think this is tremendous and obviously I would love to, to sit and just pick your brain even more, but I know obviously you get that a lot. That's why you've put together sales to CEO university. So tell me a little bit about that as we, as we wind down. 
Yeah. So, so we put together sales, the CEO uh, university, uh, and it basically is broken down in, in, into segments uh, of, of video content with PDF slash workbook type um it accompanies with some PDFs that go with the videos. And, and those PDFs are to a large degree are my own personal notes that I, I put together that break down the video because I want somebody, number one, if, if, if they buy something from me, I want them to excel and exceed. I mean, I want them to win. I don't want them to buy something to buy it. I want them to fully like, I want the testimony. I want that. I want to know the guy's name. I want to know that he became a, you know, a sales manager. I want the guy to say, Louie, look, will you help me buy a store? And I'll say, yeah, I'll help you. I, I want to be a part of that process to help these guys you know, to, to validate the things that I want to teach folks actually work and, and it's, it's impacting people's lives in the car business. So we've got sales to sales manager. Anything you would want to know if you're a salesperson and you have any ambition to go to be a sales manager and that's where you want to be, I'm going to show you all the things that no one else is going to, is going to go over with you. I mean, you and I talked before, Michael, if somebody wants to be get man, sales manager training, it's available. The problem is there's nobody coaching and teaching how to become the sales manager. Like that's a big, like there's a big gap. Like, but once you're there, if you ever are fortunate to get there, yes, there's some training. If you're a, a, a sales manager and you want to be a GM, if you get to be a GM, yes, there's some operational training. I can give it to you and many other guys can, but there's no training that says, okay, if this is what you want, here's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to do a daily with a lot of action and you'll get this end result. Same thing for a dealer partner or, or dealer principal. So this, my products break down all four categories for those four individuals that want to go to certain levels within the car business. And it will tell them everything on how to do it. And then along the way, I, in full transparency, I'm a pretty good coach operationally. You're going to learn a whole bunch of stuff about how to be a better salesperson as you're making your way, how to be a better manager, how to be a better GM and how to be a better uh, dealer principal. Yeah. You know what I love about this concept is the, the fact that what, what you just said, it's what do I got to do to go from this step to this step, but also built into that. I mean, gosh, like I'm thinking of the value of, okay, well, I'm already in the role that I want right now. I'm already a sales manager. I was a salesperson. So I got, I got that promotion. Like there's so much value in listening to the content of sales to sales manager, because guaranteed you're going to pick up on some very key things that you missed that you can, like, it's not too late to implement it, I guess. And further right. to that, like, you, you know, for example, that's the exact same reason that as the owner of my businesses, I come in every morning and I train. And when my team goes, well, what are you training on today? Like, where should we start? I say, you start where I'm starting, which is at the very beginning. So just because I'm a manager or an owner and I've had all this experience in sales, work on the ground floor, I mean, I'm an entrepreneur, so I've done every job and then some right. from cleaning the toilets to negotiating million dollar deals. And, and I'm still training on the greeting. I'm still training on the mindset. I'm still training on what people might think are very fundamental because I think there's so much inherent value in continuing to remind myself. So I love the way you've kind of positioned this, which is, Hey, there's, you know, yeah, maybe you're already a, a dealer owner. Maybe you're already a partner. There's still actually value for you going from and, and joining in and listening to the sales to sales manager information because it's going to help you lead those people better. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it, it, I would imagine if a sales manager got a hold of my material from sales to sales manager, there's no doubt in my mind he, he, he would get a ton of value because in, in that, in that product in particular, not only do I teach a sales guy, number one, how to sell over 200 cars a year and how to think about selling 40 cars a year. Not only did I talk about Facebook strategies and, and marketing plans and, and the campaigns and, and break all that down for a salesperson. And I break it down almost at a agency level right. so where they can be effective and generate their own leads. I also have um, a ton of content that's strictly on management and leadership and understanding the, the KPIs of, of every indice in the business that they need to keep track of so they can do it when they are a manager. Uh, you know, I talk about how to hold a sales meeting effectively. What are the components of a salesman? Like I break down anything and everything. And if a manager's listening to that, there's no doubt in my mind, they would learn a ton. Not, not to mention, I mean, there's 25 automobile closes on there that I can assure you sales managers probably can brush up and be, they probably need them, you know, just so do the salespeople. Because the fact of the matter is we have to overcome objections and, and deal with consumers that have stalls and things that slow them down. And all you have to work with is your words. If you have poor words, you're going to have poor results. Right. Yeah, man. Absolutely love it. I want to thank you so much for joining me on the Dealer Playbook podcast. 
How can those listening or watching get in touch with you to learn more? A couple of ways. I would anywhere, anywhere social. You can go YouTube, Sales to CEO. Um, uh, YouTube that also we have a podcast, Sales to CEO podcast. Uh, also on Facebook, Sales to CEO, our Facebook page, and also the same thing on Instagram. So just put in sales. Uh, T-O, not the number two, to CEO, and you'll find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, uh, and, and in our podcast. So uh, uh, two good ways. And then obviously on some of those various things, we have boot camps, registrations for boot camps and products and services that are available to those. And, and, and of course, our website is salesceouniversity.com. Amazing, man. Thanks so much for joining me on the DPB podcast. Thanks, buddy. I'm Michael Cirillo, and you've been listening to the Dealer Playbook Podcast. If you haven't yet, please click the subscribe button wherever you're listening right now. Leave a rating or review and share it with a colleague. If you're ready to make big changes in your life and career and want to connect with positive, nurturing automotive professionals, join my exclusive DPB Pro community on Facebook. That's where we share information, ideas, and content that isn't shared anywhere else. I can't wait to meet you there. Thanks for listening.